day four. Welcome to another Georgian S painting. Um, I was trying to find some, some uh, I don't know, in one of my books. I couldn't find this image in one of my books, but uh, um, of course I got it offline. Uh, and uh, so I did a little search online and I found the, uh, very interesting, I found the Christie's auction for it. And the price realized was $21,000, which is a freaking steal. 18 by 24 inches. Um, name of the piece is Stormy Day. Well, that's freaking awesome. You know what, though? It's like what's really sad is that, you know, you get some winkery. Not that Picasso was a winker, but you get some just, you know, second rate kind of stuff going for a heck of a lot more, more money by modern artists just a crying shame well let's see then we could talk about the uh the painting now and uh this uh, one thing in this painting i almost never do which is this big strong diagonal hill um you know i've got some insight into uh, how to handle that uh after making a copy of this painting i think um one of the things I like about this is just I clearly like the sky um, and the composition. Uh, you've got the two trees in the uh, in the middle ground that are sort of uh, balancing each other out. Um, in general, though, it's not one of its absolute strongest paintings. I think what I liked it about it mostly is just the tonal quality of it. It's all and it's very subdued. Uh, you know, kind of the olive greens and, and drab yellows and and subdued oranges and stuff. And the uh, the picture in the Christie's that I just saw uh, really just uh, looks totally dingy and gray. But uh, I'm gonna grab a uh, a nest book here. Actually, one I didn't finish yet called Georgia Nests and the Science of Landscape by Rachel Zaidi Deluxe. Delu, excuse me, not deluxe. And uh, I would just read something into random here. Um, uh, well, first of all, she's talking about Claude Lorraine. He was a huge influence. Um, mannerism of the very worst kind. This is from chapter four. In 1849, Ines exhibited a painting in the National Academy of Design entitled Early Recollections of Landscape. In a two men, one on horseback and the other on a horse drawn wagon, converse beside a forest stream, etc. His foreground trees are the same color as middle distance. Da 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 da. Color is fixed in nature. Um, well, basically, it got pant. The critics said it wounded the eye. And it doesn't look a thing like this. This is. <clears throat> you can basically see every leaf sort of delineated and uh, it owes a lot to Claude Lorraine. Um, one of the most amazing things about Georgia Ness is how he transformed from one of these, you know, detail on every tree, uh, Hudson River school guys to a guy that was doing this uh, transcendent, nearly abstract, uh, extremely vivid and uh, spiritual landscapes in his later life. Um, that's that's just part of a story. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think it's that important uh, what the artist's life story is. Um, you're probably going to get a bit of that anyway, since we have to talk about something. But uh, And I, I'm more interested in his process. And when you try to learn about George Ness's process, the only clues I've got were from a book he wrote, his son wrote about him, a biography. And even there, it's really sketchy. I mean, one thing I know about uh, George Ness is that he would do anything he could to get his uh, his ideas across. So he would scumble, which is when you, you rub in light paint over darker areas, or he would glaze, which is when you do the same with transparent uh, pigments over already painted areas but he would pick and scratch and uh, his paintings have a remarkable surface quality um, anyway i guess we're getting to the end here if you'd like to see more of my work it's landscapepainter.co.nz and this is m francis mccarthy 
signing off. I hope you enjoy the video. Have a great day.